My favorite time of the day was always read aloud time. And this was a time where my students and I would get together. We would be able to read a good book, engage with one another, have great conversations, and just enjoy stories. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top favorite read aloud books for upper elementary. I always start the beginning of the year with a personal narrative and the personal narrative that I would pick would be Wish um, by Barbara O'Connor. And I love this book. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it later on, but this would be the first book that I would tell you to read. The next book that I would have you read is more of like a traditional literature book. And I like it because typically I could get to this book around Halloween-ish time, which the kids always enjoy this. And that's called Night Books and it's by J.A. White. Um, this this has a Netflix movie that is out um, that you can watch with your students if you have the ability to be able to watch it on Netflix. My students always enjoyed watching this movie right after we had finished this book. From there, I might go into some form of a fantasy book. Now, the fantasy book that I recommend um, would be The Wild Robot. This book just doesn't have a book sleeve on it because my youngest son took that one off. But with the movie The Wild Robot coming out, I felt like it was just really important to be able to share this one. I've also done this book at the very end of the year. And what I liked about doing this at the end of the year was that was typically when I was also teaching geometry. Um, and so my students would build their own robots with the incorporating it with the unit of geometry. So it was a really, really fun time. And the kids enjoyed this book tremendously. And then finally, for the historical fiction book, I'm going to pick Wolf Hollow. Uh, love Wolf Hollow. And I believe her last name is, is pronounced Walk. Um, W-O-L-K, so Lauren Wolk. Um, this book is just amazing. It will have you on your toes. The kids get so into it, but definitely one that you would really enjoy. So those would be my top, that if I said you needed to just use these books, those are the books that I would tell you to go ahead and use. However, there are so many other books within those genres that I love and that I have read over the course of my time as a teacher. So I'm going to share each of those and we're going to break them down by genres, giving you a little bit of a synopsis of what the book is about and tell you why I love it. Now, I need to clarify something before we move forward. Read aloud. What exactly is read aloud time and how do I justify a read aloud time or what do I define as this read aloud time? Well, for me, this is a time Time period that is away from my literacy block. This does not incorporate any form of lessons. There's not explicit teaching that is occurring. It's truly a time for my students to be able to hear a good story. They don't have the books in front of them. They're not following along. I don't give them a test to have it at the very end of the day. I just want them to be able to engage and enjoy good books. It's an opportunity for me to instill in them what it is like to be a really good reader. So I I want to make that very clear as we move forward that all of the books that I'm going to be sharing with you, while there are some instructional value to them and they do offer a lot when it comes to assessing and determining whether students are being able to comprehend, this is not the time for me to build, to build that in. At the end of the day, I always have to ask the purpose for anything that I'm incorporating into my instructional time with them. And for me, this was more about just language comprehension building vocabulary, talking about my metacognition like as a teacher, allowing them to have really good conversations about books and being able to resonate with them and build connections between other texts that we had been reading during our literacy block. So I want to say that it is really important that if you have the time to be able to incorporate some form of a read aloud component or block in your schedule, try to build that in. This could be aligned with a snack schedule. So if you are somebody who has snack time, maybe you can build in read aloud with snack time. Maybe you have just some like 15, 20 ish minutes in between going from lunch to a special or vice versa. Then maybe you can build a read aloud time there. Or at the end of the day, while students are packing up and getting ready for missing dismissal. Maybe you have about 15 minutes right beforehand. Incorporate your read aloud time at that moment. But all in all, just remember that this is not a time for you to determine whether students are comprehending the text. This is about enjoying a book with your students, building community one another, and just loving stories. 
Now, if you've been following me for any period of time, then you know that during my literacy block, I don't like to utilize chapter books. And the primary reason for this is because they're too long. It takes too long to get into the book. The plot of the of the text is too long. You can't get into the climax of the book until almost you're almost finished with the text itself. And so it's really challenging to take skills and teach those skills explicitly when it comes to a chapter book. However, I do like to incorporate some of the chapter books that we've read during our read aloud time into our literacy block. So we might revisit certain parts of a text that we have already read during our read aloud time, and I will incorporate those into my literacy block. So this might sound something like, Boys and girls, do you remember when we were reading the book, The Wild Robot, and how the author really painted the scene for us in the very beginning to help us understand what the setting was like for the robot? I want us to look at this chapter here in this text because the author does a really beautiful job of being very descriptive with their writing in, in this chapter. And so you can kind of see there that I've already read it, we've already gone through it, we've had discussions about it, but now I'm pulling it in because maybe I'm doing a lesson all about setting. And I want them to have an opportunity to dig a little bit deeper into that setting. And so it allows me to build connections between our read aloud time and our literacy block. Um, but I like to keep the chapter books to specifically my read aloud time. Now at the end of the year, I do like to have book clubs. Now I love book clubs at the end of the year because it gives us the opportunity to go back and review our skills that we've learned. This is kind of that culminating piece for the end of the year, where now students have learned about plot, they've learned about conflict, they've learned about setting and inferencing and quest asking and answering questions and pulling evidence from a text, that now we can have the ability to be able to pull it from this much larger text in general. So I always stick to smaller texts, like as I'm teaching throughout the year, have a book club period at the very end of the year, and then also incorporating our read aloud text into our literacy lessons as well. So I wanted to share with you first my top favorites. These are going to be the ones that if I was to tell you today as a literacy teacher, you have to read these books, read these books, read them in this order with your students to help build a love of reading. This is what I would end up telling you. I like to select my books according to genre. So at the beginning of the year, I like to start with personal narratives because we're building personal narratives into our literacy instruction. And then I like to go to more of either a traditional literature or a fantasy book. And then I start to go into a historical fiction, typically um, about two, two thirds of the year, maybe two, um, two quarters of the year through, like halfway through the year or even two thirds of the way through through the school year. Um, and that just allows me to be able to hit all of the different genres um, with my students and incorporating those into books. Now I have, as a teacher, incorporating uh, incorporated chapter books written in verse and also nonfiction books. And they're great, they're wonderful to use. They're never really my favorites. Um, the the chapter book that was written in verse was uh, something that was very much outside of my comfort zone, but it ended up working out with the group of students that I had. Now, would I say that every group of students is going to love a chapter book written in verse? Probably not. You really have to kind of pinpoint the class that it's going to work well with because again the whole goal of this is that I want to build this love of reading and get them excited about um, getting into some really really good books. So we're going to start with personal narratives because that is how I start every single school year and so we're going to go back to the book called Wish by Barbara O'Connor. Now, Barbara O'Connor is also the author of How to Steal a Dog, which is another one of my favorite books, but is a favorite for book clubs. I keep that one specifically for book clubs. I never read it as a read aloud because I want students to be able to engage with it um, together in a group if they so choose to do that book. This book, uh, Wish, is a fantastic text, and it is about, um, I have to look at her name, her name is Charlie, and it is about a young girl named Charlie who um, has kind of a rough home life, and she ends up going to live with her aunt and uncle in like the Blue Mountains. And so it just talks about her journey because she just feels as though she should go back to her mama and her papa, who's like, well, he's in jail at the moment, but he's going to end up getting out, and they're going to have their own... Um, their own 
family reunion and she talks about making wishes and you never really know what the wish is that she's making but it is a wonderful story the kids really love it I when I typically when I read this book I read it with a country accent I'm not sure why I just do but I read it with a country accent and they always seem to love this text and it really gets them into this author so I would pull out more books from this author and be able to share it with my students and they always love to go back and read more of her texts so highly recommend this book from there, the next book that I would read is called Restart. Oh, I love this book. It's from Gordon Corman, which I love a lot of his texts and I have them um, still for my youngest son to be able to read them. But I love Restart. It is a book, and I have to look at his name. His name is Chase. But Chase is a like really top notch kid, like super popular kid. And he ends up falling off of the roof of his house and loses his memory. And then he realizes very quickly, oh, I'm the bully in school. Like I am the person that nobody likes, but he starts making friends with kind of the weird kids or the loser kids as sometimes they were referred to them. But he's also a football star, but he doesn't know how to play football anymore because he doesn't have that memory. And I just love, it's his way of just realization of, this is the person that I've been and now I want to make changes to who I was because I don't like finding out that this was the kind of person that I was before I had lost my memory. So love this book. It's fantastic. I actually had a student who gave me this book um, at the end of the school year and you can kind of see that she wrote in it. So I will always keep this text because it's just one of my favorites, but I love, love reading this book as well. So this would be great if you want a male character um, and also for kind of the upper grade. So I wanna say it's like fifth, sixth grade. Um, the wish is great for like third and fourth grade, but also fifth and sixth grade. I feel like these kids would love any of these books that I'm gonna be recommending to you. The next book that I have for you is one that doesn't have a cover on it because yet again, my youngest son takes the book sleeves off and then he never puts them back and I can never find them. But this book is called Fish in a Tree. It's one that I have read many, many times before in my career. And Fish in a Tree is about a girl named Allie and Allie, her dad is in the army. Um, she has a mom and she doesn't know how to read very well. And so she is in school, um, ends up getting a substitute. The substitute realizes that she has something called dyslexia. Um, and so it's kind of her journey of learning how to read and um, being able to make friends with certain kids that are around her. So I love the characters. Her friends in this book are just so good. It is a very heartwarming story of just knowing that we are all different in some way, shape or another, and that we need to respect each other's differences and where we fall just like academically. So I like to start the year off with having a conversation about how we're all in different places when it comes to our learning. It's always making sure that we're respecting one another um, and knowing that we're on different journeys and that's okay. So love Fish in the Tree, highly would recommend this as well. Now, if you are somebody who is inside of the Bridging Literacy community, which is a community for third through sixth grade teachers where we provide professional development opportunities, we provide you with resources, breaking down anchor standards, and so much more inside of it. Um, it is truly a community that if you are looking to be able to grow in your understanding of how to deliver authentic and rigorous literacy instruction for your students, but at the same time have the resources to help you plan every single week, this is the community that is right for you. But inside of that community. We have um, currently right now two different read alouds. Third one is coming out very, very soon. And it comes with various resources. So Fish in the Tree is one of the resources that we have. It has questions that you can ask for your students every day, vocabulary words. There are some task cards that are in there, but there's also some really fun, engaging activities that you can have your students do for like warm ups. I am not a warm up. Try to do every person, do it every single day, like from a book or having some form of like a bell ringer. That is not my personality. I like things to be very simple and authentic for my students. So the activities that come inside of these resources are fun, engaging, and it's going to get kids having conversations. And that's a really beautiful way to be able to build connections um, at the beginning of the year is having those resources first thing in the morning. So this resource is available to you um, and I will be sharing the other one that is available in the community later on. 
So the realistic fiction category had a lot more books that were my favorite. Um, now we're going to jump into more of the traditional literature category. And I only have two recommendations. And one of those recommendations is a series. So the first one that I mentioned to you that was like my top favorites is night books. Love night books. It is so, so good. This was introduced to me by my cousin who is a third grade teacher in Texas. He read it to his students and loved it. And I have now read it every single year, which Again, if you have followed me for any period of time, then you know that I don't typically reread the same books to my students um, over the course of every year. Uh, we have, I read brand new books for read aloud because I want to be able to engage and interact with my students as we go through the text themselves. But I also want to stay on top of literature um, as a teacher. So Night Books is about a boy named Alex, which in the be very beginning of the text, Alex uh, is trying to burn something and he calls them his night books. And we don't really know why he's trying to burn something, but on his way into the basement, which is where the furnace is in the apartment building that he lives in, he gets stopped on a floor. And the floor is just kind of a random floor on their apartment building. Well, he hears a movie playing in the background. It's his favorite scary movie that he loves. And he gets kind of sucked into or hypnotized to go into this um, room, this this apartment room. And so he goes in and the door locks behind him and he gets stuck in there with a witch. Now, the witch is very interesting because uh, it gets to kind of a point where he's reading her a scary story every night. But then it becomes that he starts to write scary stories. So we find out that his night books are actually scary stories that he has written. There's a lot of internal and external conflict because there's another character in the story. It is truly so good. It's a twist on fairy tales. Um, and I think it's one that your students will absolutely love. One of my favorite parts about this text is that in there, he has the scary stories that he's written. And so there's like snippets of him reading his scary story to the witch uh, to be able to kind of keep the house, the house or the apartment happy, which we learn about that later on. And um, it's just, it. I love the, the change in, just the story. And then all of a sudden, Alex is sharing his scary story that he's written. And the old kids always love hearing those stories as well. Now, if you, again, are, are a member for the Bridging Literacy community, we also have one of these um, read alouds for night books. So I wanted to show you a little bit more about what these look like. So I kind of bind mine up so that it looks like this. That way, when I'm reading it with my students, I can just kind of pull it to that page. I have each page laminated. So inside you're gonna see it has the chapter, you have very of language, you can have a mentor sentence that maybe you want your students to be able to practice vocabulary, guiding questions. So it has some various activities in here as well. So when there's an activity, you can kind of see it down here at the bottom. But it's the activities that I think that I love the most out of this because it takes the scary stories that Alex's have written and kids have to either provide an ending to it or they have to alter the ending to it. So it's a great writing activity for them. Um, and it's this idea of talking about authors and the writer's block and what that all means. So you can incorporate that into your writing lessons as well. So there's task cards. There's also some pages in here that if you want to use mentor sentence sentences, you can have students break these down. These would be great as like an independent activity, or if you wanted to incorporate it into your small groups, you can definitely incorporate it there. Okay, so that is the night books uh, read aloud companion that goes with it, that if you are reading this with your class and you wanna build in some activities into some blank spots that you have throughout the day, you can definitely do that. But again, I don't utilize these as a grade. It's just an extended practice that my students have um, for the discussions and the things that we're talking about within our literacy lessons. The next book that I have for you is going to be a three-parter. <laughs> now, uh, I read this book. I will warn you that when you read this book, it is very dark and twisted. So the book is called A Tale Dark and Grim, and it is by Adam Gridwitz. Gridwitz? Gridwitz? And it's basically a twist on Hansel and Gretel. Um, and it gives you the dark story. But what's so cool about it is that all these stories start to kind of collide, all these fairy tale stories colliding to one another. Um, and the kids always like to be able to pick up on it. 
Plus, there's really great humor to this. So it's not like truly dark and scary because the author is like, whoa, 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 hold on. You were probably thinking this, but it's actually that like the humor and just the lightheartedness of making something um, like grim fairy tales so dark and twisted fun for kids is really exciting. I'm going to be honest. I had to go purchase this book for the fifth time. I have had to buy these books so many times because my students keep taking them. <laughs> so I had to rebuy A Tale Dark and Grim. And this one comes in a series. So it also has In a Glass Grimly is the second book in that series, which I had to purchase yet again. This was the only one that I actually had in my collection, um, which is The Grim Co Conclusion. And this is the final of the trilogy that my students have read before. So love these books. I will tell you some students are like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like this. But the way that you read it, the way that you interact with your students and kind of make it lighthearted, I think will totally change the feeling of the text itself. So um, great, great books. If you're wanting to do some form of like a traditional literature text right after the personal narratives, and it just fits perfect for that time of the year, like October fits so good. It's perfect. So this one is going to be the saddest of all of the categories. It is the historical fiction se section, um, mainly because I've read some historical fiction books, and I'm going to be honest, some of them were really hard to get through. Um, the students and I wanted to quit multiple times, and we were like, mm, like, it's good, and I'm glad we didn't quit, but man, it was really, really hard to get into that text. Like, it just took us a long time to actually enjoy the book itself, like Echo Mountains, um, the, the War That Saved My Life great books. It just took us a long time to get into the text itself. So, and I know I keep repeating myself there. The book that I have that I absolutely love and I shared earlier is Wolf Hollow. I love Wolf Hollow because the story is quick. It's like sharp. It kind of gets into it. Like you meet the bully from the very beginning and start to realize, oh my gosh, this girl is not a nice person. But the book is about Annabelle, um, who lives in a town inside of Pennsylvania, which is where I am currently located. And I always like to build that in, especially where I live, because of course we all live in Pennsylvania. The kids enjoy it. But she has a bully that shows up in, in to town and the bully's name is Betty. And man, is Betty a bully? <laughs> like Betty the bully. It is truly that is exactly what she is. But she is like terrorizing her class. She is ter terrorizing Annabelle. Um, and there's also a, what we almost want to call like a hermit or someone who's homeless, like a transient person who moves from area to area, who just came out of the war. So you learn a little bit about him um, and what is kind of happening during that time of that they're living inside of this book. But it's a great text. It does have some dark spots of it. Um, there is some gangrene and like there's there's a whole situation that happens. I don't want to ruin it for you, but there are some really dark moments that you're like, oh my gosh, this is very scary. But I think it was a great text. My students truly enjoyed it. We had lots of very rich conversations about the characters within this book. Um, so highly recommend it. There is another book, that, book that's called Beyond the Bright Sea from that author. I have not read it yet, but it is currently on my list to be read. So love this book. Now, this next book is one that was shared to me by a coworker. She was reading this book to her class and she said that they really enjoyed it. And it was always one that was on my list, but I had never read it with my students before. The book is called A Night Divided by Jennifer Nielsen. And Jennifer Nielsen is a very popular author when it comes to historical fiction, along with Alan Grant's. Um, he does like A Night Divided, Refugee, great, great text, especially for like sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade realm. Um, I personally have not read this book yet. It is currently on my list. So this is the one that I've taken out to be able to read it. I do believe that I would really enjoy it. I like the storyline itself. So basically it's about a family who's divided with the rise of the Berlin Wall. So you can build in a lot of research and learning about the Berlin Wall 
to help students be able to make connections and understand this text more deeply. So I like the background knowledge that you can build with students as you're reading this book, um, but definitely a popular one. Now, the book Refugee and also um, A Long Walk to Water are two of my other really favorite books. However, I keep those for, you named it, my book clubs. I do not incorporate those into my read alouds because I love those books so much that I just keep those for my book club times, but highly recommend this text. If you um, have not read it because it came very highly recommended to me by somebody that I trust when it comes to read alouds. We are now into the final category, which is gonna be fantasy. I'm not incorporating chapter books with verse. I'm not gonna incorporate uh, narrative nonfictions, any of those, because those were never ones that I really wanted to tap into. However, fantasy is one that I absolutely loved. So this is going to be um, some of the, the, the two top favorites that I have. And the first one that I had recommended to you was going to be The Wild Robot. I mean, it's just a given. It was one of these when I first started reading The Wild Robot. I remember reading the first like several chapters and I was like, are we just gonna get the setting the entire time? <laughs> like, when does the story start? But once you get into this book, oh my goodness, it is so, so good. I remember reading this with my class and then we had read the second book, which is The Wild Robot Escapes. And the day that this book came out, we had just finished The Wild Robot. And I decided that over my lunch break, I was going to run to the to the bookstore to be able to go pick this up so that we can start it and I could surprise my students. And they were so, so excited. So this is a trilogy. It has three different uh, books. So The Wild Robot Protects, which this is the one that is also on my book list after A Night Divided so that I can be able to read that. But one of my favorite things of doing this, and I mentioned it earlier, was that if you read this at the very end of the year and you're teaching geometry, you can do some really fun geometry projects with it. So the kids got to create their robots. Um, they were using graphing to be able to build their robots using different shapes and angles. So we had to have specific numbers of angles inside of their robots and they had to be able to determine those and share. They named their robots, they presented them. It was just a really, really fun activity. And so I highly recommend building this in with geometry if you um, have not already done so. So definitely recommend these great books. I also love that the chapters are really short, so I never have to end in the middle of a chapter, which is not my favorite thing to do with my students in class. I like to end at the end of a chapter. And so it was nice that these chapters are so short that I felt like I could just get through a bunch of chapters and stop at the end when I was ready to stop. The last book that I have for you is one that I've read a couple of times with my students and it's Scar Island. Scar Island, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this author's last name, but this is a great book. And the reason that it's fantasy is because there are some like fantasy elements there. For instance, when this young man who gets accused of a crime, a very terrible crime, we never really hear about the crime in the beginning. We just know that it's horrible. He did horrible, awful things. Things. And he gets sent to a boys camp. And this boys camp is on an island, kind of like Alcatraz. You could almost picture it like that. And he, um, on the first couple of days, all of the adults are basically electrocuted and they die. And then we find out that there's like a tunnel system with really large animals in them. There's just some like fantasy elements that are kind of incorporated into it, which is why I ended up putting it in the fan fantasy category. But it's a great book. I will say there are some curse words, but if you were good about just like reading ahead, then you can kind of pick a point and then just kind of skip over those words with no problems whatsoever. But great book. The kids always enjoy uh, reading this one. And I, again, highly recommend it, which is why it's on my top favorites. I mentioned this at the very beginning of this video, but read aloud time truly was my favorite time. It was the 15 to 20 minutes that I had with my students to be able to just open up a book, read. They were all kind of got cozy, comfy. We would have some really good discussions about it. The kids would get so into the text that they were reading. And 
it was just my time to be able to build community with them. So if you do not incorporate some form of a read aloud time, like I said, it's 15 to 20 minutes of your day where you're just opening a book and reading it to them. I highly recommend that you try it out this year and just see what happens with your students. And you're gonna find that the more you do this with them and you have conversations about these really fun and rich texts, they're gonna get hooked with them and then they're gonna start to read them. And they, you will even find that some kids will check out the book that you're reading during read aloud because they want to follow along with you or they want to read ahead because they're really excited and they can't wait for us to be able to read it during read aloud. And so I just love building a sense of community and building readers inside of my classroom. And this was always my favorite way to be able to, to do it. I hope that you enjoyed hearing just of how I structured my read alouds and how I picked them out and incorporated those into the year. Um, I've always tried to do something a little bit different. Like I said, I've added narrative nonfictions. I've added chapters chapter books with verse um, over the years to make up about like five or six books in a school year is what I was typically able to get through. Plus then we had our book clubs that we had at the very end of the year. But these are definitely some of my favorites and I, uh, I cannot recommend these enough and I would go back to these books over and over and over again. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video and it gave you just a little bit of inspiration of what you can choose for your next read aloud time. Let me know, have you read any of the books that I've mentioned here or are you going to be choosing one of these books to incorporate it into your class and reading it with them? I would love to know, throw that into the comments. So thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like the video, it helps me to be able to get out to other teachers that are out there. So Subscribe if you have not already and then hit that notification bell. I will talk to you all next time. Bye.